Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining. It's John Jay. Today is uh, April uh, 4th, and uh, I was going to have our regular Thursday evening call, and I wanted to uh, cover some uh, a general subject about taking responsibility. And I just want to talk about the things that we normally talk about, which is legal structures, documents, strategies, okay? But there's something that's really important that's underlying all these things. And I just, it came into my head just now, this uh, movie called Other People's Money, where uh, Danny DeVito, he was the liquidator. And uh, he gives his speech to the shareholders, all right? Explaining to them uh, what he does. And I just thought it was relevant. And if you guys want to check it out, I think you, that scene is only four minutes, four, four or five minutes, okay? <clears throat> but what I want to talk about was this. So I, I speak with many people during the week. And I'll just, I'm going to tell you a couple of stories. And I don't want to disparage anybody. And I'm not going to name names. I'm just going to, this is generally what I what I run into on a month-to-month -month basis. And I just need to uh, stop and, and, and talk about this because it's so important that you have the right attitude, first of all. You're dealing with money. It's the important, most important thing, okay, in your life. Money, it gets yeah. things done, right? It gets things done. It solves problems. It also creates problems probably because you don't know how to use it and you don't respect it, possibly. I know. I've been there. Um, but I talked to a gentleman the other day, and I uh, I was explaining, okay, so here's one of the things we need to do is deed over your property, the title, so change the title so we can do this other thing. And I'm thinking, the person owns a house, right? So I'm thinking, he knows what I'm talking about. And I said, if you need some help, let me know. I can help you with the language. Didn't hear from him for a week. I get a text message. I don't know what document you're talking about. And I said, well, it's a quick claim deed. It's the single document that gave you the rights to sell your house and gave you the liability of owning the house. You don't know what a quick claim deed is? He goes, no. I said, well, you actually have that document. When you closed on the house, you were given that document. I mean, if you don't know what that is, I said, give, give me your house. I'll take it. He wouldn't, then that kind of woke him up. And he got a little angry. He goes, why would I give you my house? I said, because you don't deserve it. If you can't tell me the document that gave you the right to sell your house and that gave you the house in the first place, the title to it, then you shouldn't have it. That's like giving a, a child a gun. He doesn't understand the implications of if he's going to injure somebody with it, right? What happens? He might know how to shoot it, but come on, you know? And then someone's asking me on texting messages, okay? He wants to make his income from crypto and he calls it crypto investing and so i hear this all the time so i said okay so how much are you working with how much money you're working with if you want to live off of your crypto investment how much are you working with he said five thousand dollars i said okay first of all there is no crypto investment unless you're really good at forecasting or you're staking or something like that i said it's speculation so you take your $5,000 and go buy something like an online website or something and make some cash flow. Come on, let's be responsible here, okay? What are you thinking? You're going to get rich off $5,000? So here's the thing that's we're getting our asses kicked, okay? Because we're working by ourselves. So I, I said this before. This is not, nothing new, okay? I, I did a video back in July of last year talking about you know, it's time to be effective. Learn how to be effective. You cannot do things by uh, by yourself. I just talked to a gentleman, smart guy. He, he's a career artisan and what he's doing. <clears throat> and uh, he's going to just take on the world himself. No, that's not how it works. That's how we're taught in school. So that's how we like to think. That's how we go get a job, right? We'll get a job individually. And then we work individually. No, we don't. Most jobs, you get things done by working in teams, right? So why are you out in the world making a living, working by yourself all the time. You have to have an association. You have to be able to call people and get things done. You cannot do everything by yourself. And if you're in a situation where you don't have other professionals to work with, like that are your colleagues, you want to get a professional that can provide the services that you need. <clears throat> so you have to collaborate. You have to collaborate by paying people or uh, people that know things that you don't need to know, like a doctor, right? Or a dentist. And so that's where we're getting defeated and we're being defeated. Uh, a lot of you are asking me about private membership associations uh, as if that's a thing, a new thing that is going to solve your, let's say, tax problem, right? Or whatever the case might be. All right. Not really. It's not going to do that. That's not the purpose. Okay. 
maybe the purpose of the PMA is so that uh, you can identify an association or describe one or maybe use it for property rights or something like that. It's not for defeating the tax system. It's for managing risk possibly. But a PMA is not an entity. It's an association. It's a relationship between, typically between people. But think about, we're so focused on those things because we want to get out of taxes. We don't, we're forgetting about the proper use of capital, but we're also not recognizing the fact that we're surrounded by PMAs and that's what's kicking our asses. It's the bar association. It's the bar. It's the banking system. These are private associations. It's your court system. These are private associations. The court system has the same legal standing as your family. Yeah, and granted, they're operating on public funds and they have access to the police and things like that. But the family has the same legal standing. Your 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 parents, uh, your spouse, uh, and your adult children, okay, and your grandparents and this sort of thing. The family has uh, judicial power. I'm not saying it's a court. I mean, it can be used that way. But recognize what a PMA is. It's all around us. Um, recognize what property rights are. A property right includes a parental right. Okay, and this is what I discovered recently, and, I, and I, I have to use this as an example. And I know this is, I study this all the time, right? So it's easy for me to see this. I get that. But there are some basic things that you guys should understand. You have to. You have to. Like, for example, let me just say, so you can, you should be looking at, if you're just, if, if you have, in your life, if you you got a house and a car, okay, and you, maybe you got income and you're making everything work, but what what do you have that's a, a an asset, right? What do you own that is actually, if you didn't show up every day, that would still pay you? And many people don't have anything that's still going to pay them if they don't show up for work. So what you want to try to do is, and this is this really is the most important thing when people talk about like they're angry at the government, right? Or maybe they're angry at the IRS or they're, they feel like they're getting pushed around by the financial system, right? Well, the way to combat that is of course, understand what's going on, who's causing all these things, but it's to make yourself financially independent. Like in other words, have a net worth, have a net worth. You don't need to be a millionaire to actually have a millionaire's income. It's actually pretty simple. If What's a millionaire's income? If I have a net worth of, let's say, $3 million, how much of that do I need? Well, that's my holdings, right? That's maybe the value of my holdings. Maybe I own some real estate that totals, if I were to sell it all, it's worth $3 million, right? Well, I'm not getting $3 million a month or a year. Maybe I'm getting $20,000 a month. Maybe I'm get, making $30,000 a month. So the question is, well, whether or not I'm a millionaire, what is going to make me, let's say, $15,000 a month? For most people, that's more money than, than they need. It's more money than I need to live right here in Orlando. So maybe your objective should be not so much, how do I get out of the tax system? <laughs> how do I, what kind of thing do I send to uh, the IRS, right? How do I argue with them? Maybe your thing should be, how do I acquire something that's going to pay me, let's just say $2,000 a month. And when I figure that out, and maybe I need a couple of people to help me through that process. Now I'll know how to do it right at that point. And if I want to make 10 more thousand dollars a month, I'll figure that out too, won't I? It'll become easier. That is the best use of your time. Understand where you're starting from. So I think a lot of a lot of the work I do is listen. You li I listen to what you're telling me if you're consulting with me on the phone. And I'm able to express your problem or identify it in words. Many times you you can't do that. And that's fine. I mean, if my car is making a funny noise, I probably don't know what the problem is, right? I have to go to a mechanic. It, it's under, under, understandable. But there are some basic things that you should be expected to know. <clears throat> in any case, I, I don't want to go too far into it, I guess, but I just want to start the call like that. And what what is the what is the message here? The message is that you want to be effective with the problems you're dealing with, okay? And this is, this is a, a group where it's a forum, really. It's a... It's a list of people that we all have a common common interest. Okay, we're dealing with taxes, right? We're dealing with crypto investing, uh, things of that nature, right? We want to make more money. We're dealing with money, right? So we can collaborate. I have this discussion forum. You guys can collaborate. I, it's nice that you put up some news articles, and I appreciate, uh, I think Batman, he's moderating that. I appreciate what you're doing. Um, but this can also be a place to uh, collaborate with others, not just post news articles about what's uh, the gloom and doom coming our way, right? 
let's collaborate. If one of you knows how to use the dark web, maybe you might want to show some other people, right? Collaborate. Um, you know, I, I did a, uh, a call last week and I was talking about uh, this new thing with Amazon and I, and I apologize for not getting back with everyone. I'm, a, I'm accumulating a list. So I, I have a list of people that are interested in, in doing this. And so I'm going to get with you and I'm going to have a special call and we're going to talk about that. <clears throat> so what that involves, for those of you who didn't hear, is uh, am, uh, working with Amazon is uh, expensive and it's not profitable if you're a small buyer, okay? So uh, there's a company that has pooled together all the small buyers and made them big buyers. So now uh, if you're a small buyer, you can buy just like the company that's spending uh, $500,000 a month on inventory. You can get those rates and that makes you competitive. And it's set up in a way that you're not competing with each other. Like there's not 15 people doing the same thing that are competing with each other or the market's so big that you, you're going to make money. It's going to be fine. You know? <clears throat> so anyway, um, that, that call I'll, I'll give you guys the uh, recording. Um, I'm not going to edit that. I'm going to put it up on the Telegram, uh, Ace of Coins, all right? But this is really where the focus should be. It's not so much how do I avoid taxes and what documents do I file and, you know, what's a PMA? <laughs> that Those are, you know, maybe little technical uh, things, but your attitude should be, how am I going to become uh, independent? Not so much how am I going to do I need to store silver guns and gold and, you know, all these things and store food and all that? Okay, fine. Maybe I'm starting to see that. I don't think that's really the, the way to do it. I think really the way to go forward is to work with people that you're already around, like your neighbors, and then work with colleagues, people that are in a similar profession or have a similar interest. I think working with other people in, in an associative way is more effective instead of working by yourself. And almost everybody I talk to, is working alone. <clears throat> In fact, because they have these these similar ideas that I share with you, these strategies or the, 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 the desire to do some of these things, they've somewhat alienated from their own families. Their own families members are, are are too scared, you know, to talk about these things. Like, how do I have a company that doesn't have a tax liability? You know, that's scary to them. So. Um, Anyways, I just wanted to, to start with that and just and just encourage you to just uh, focus on a better use of your time, right? I did a video about eight months ago with uh, VJ, right, on Rogue News, Strategic Life, where I explained, I demonstrated how we I used artificial intelligence to write a business plan for an e-bike dealership. This AI gave me the company name. It gave me all the provisions of it. It told me who my competitors were. I mean, literally, it told me who the competitors were. It told me how much money I needed to start up, who my suppliers would be. And I verified everything. It took me hours. I went through the whole thing and it was dead on. So my point there is that if I want to have some power, that's one way to do it. I'm using software that's now being used against us. I'm using it to increase my net worth. That's the way we want to think about this stuff. And I think maybe what motivated me to say these things is that I'm working with some people right now and I know that they, they all mean well, okay? And, and the people I'm working with, they're in different states and they're in a divorce proceeding. And I'm explaining about how to do things and they want to do their own thing. And it's almost every case is like that. Now, I did have one gentleman who uh, did exactly what I told him, which was very minimal, by the way. And he got the exact results that I told him he would. And he was so ecstatic. You know, he called me after that and he thanked me and he said, wow, this is okay. I feel really empowered now because I did exactly what you said. Now, that's not always the case. I could tell you something. And, and many times in a divorce proceeding, what you're, what you're seeing is an involuntary receivership. <clears throat> this may not mean anything to y'all, but I can tell you that it's illegal. Okay. You cannot have a divorce proceeding where the pleading is for the dissolution of a marriage declaratory relief and then conduct an involuntary receivership. I'll give you an example. If I, if I get a traffic ticket, a speeding ticket, and I go to, I go to court, if I go, let's say I go to trial, right? I want to go have a hearing on this traffic ticket and I go there and the judge conducts an involuntary bankruptcy and liquidates all my property. Do you think there's a problem there? This is what's happening in family court. So when I'm walking people through this and I understand it intimately, I understand what's going on. And it's when I tell my clients to do a thing, 
they don't want to do it because they don't understand. And so they're questioning me and, okay, I get that, but disaster happens. Okay. Disaster happens. It makes it more difficult for me. So I don't know. Um, th I guess those cases are, are really uh, a, a problem for me right now. It's the same thing with, uh, we got a similar thing going on with the easements, you know, um, they're very powerful people don't realize and we haven't even begun to exercise the kind of power that the easement has and the way i've created this is so that we can use something that's been around since before our government existed okay easements have been around long before our government existed and we can continue to use their effectiveness outside of the trial court system the trial court system is so corrupted it's not even a court anymore and don't get me started on that subject but it's going to be a very effective tool, okay? So we have an easement. We're able to get around the court system to arbitrate matters and establish legal rights and then come back into the court system and access the police power to enforce those rights. We're doing that right now. So some people, you know, when I explain this, they, you know, I think their eyes glaze over and they just, uh, they think, well, this guy's a nutcase. Because, you know, what they'll do is they'll go on the internet and they'll Google stuff. And they're not going to find any of this information anywhere. It's just like I was talking to somebody today and he he understood what I was saying. And he said, but his wife, she thinks that what he's doing following my recommendation is uh, breaking the tax laws. And I said, well, just ask her this question. You don't have to argue with her. I said, just give her something to think about. If income is being taxed, why is it not defined in the tax code? So is this a very, very simple thing, right? These are very simple concepts that each of you should be wondering, right? It's the same thing with cryptos. Why am I the only person to see that cryptos are not taxable? And here's my legal conclusion. If I could pay the tax in cryptos, well, then they'd be taxable, right? Because I'm not required to have dollars, am I? Let's assume that if I receive dollars, they're taxable, right? Am I required to receive dollars? No, I'm not. So if I have cryptos, Am I required to sell them for dollars? No, I'm not. So how can they be taxable? They're not. What laws changed? None. That was my conclusion in 2000, when was it? 2013. In 2013, I'm trying to educate people, right? In 2013, cryptos came out in 2009. I didn't start getting into them until like 2011. And that was a year before the IRS came out and said, okay, cryptos are property. I was telling people that they were property a year before the IRS said it's property. That saved me a lot of time, I thought. So there's just some basics that we have to understand. This is important stuff. Money, things that we have. Okay, a house is not an asset. It's not your asset. It's somebody's. It's not yours. Somebody's making money off your house. Somebody's making money off the debt service. Somebody's making money off the, uh, the taxation of it. OK, if you want to make money off the taxation of real estate, buy municipal bonds, buy state bonds, lend money to your government. That's how you make money off property taxes, buy the taxing certificates. OK, if you don't like paying the property tax, invest in it. It's pretty simple stuff. And yeah, crypto is property. It's intangible property. Uh, you know, parental rights are intangible property rights. A property right is or a privacy right is a property right. Uh, the right to make a choice, okay, uh, is a property right. The right to, it's, it could also be considered a fundamental right. It, uh, the right to make a choice, right? To, to enter into a contract where rights and obligations are expressed, the right to enter into to the contract in the first place, that's a right. So if you understand that basic concept, Ask yourself this question. If you're in a divorce proceeding and the judge says you have to sell your house and split the equity with your spouse, which requires you to enter into a listing agreement, requires you to let people see your house, requires you to enter into a sales contract and all kinds of other things, right? How can a court order you to do that? How can a court order you to exercise a choice that wasn't yours? It can't unless you're not a human being. Make sense? These are the things that I maybe I shouldn't be stressed over, but it, it really bothers me when I have this conversation, this circular conversation over and over again. And it's it's like I'm dealing with, okay, you all are smart, but maybe you're programmed. Maybe you're programmed. I mean, 
I told one gentleman, and I'm not disparaging women, okay? I'm just going to give you the stereotypical example. The woman is rewarded for divorcing the husband. And so what she does is because she doesn't agree with the husband, she goes to the government to use the police power to coerce them into doing what she wants. That's what happens. So I, my advice to men is in those cases, and I do have some women I'm helping that are in, in a divorce, but uh, my advice is don't pay for it. Don't give your wife who wants a divorce any more money. Cut her off of everything. And the men don't want to do it. They, they end up not doing it. I don't understand. So now what happens is the money is being used to, you're, you're actually having to fight against your own money. So the wife that wants to divorce you and you know it and you give her the money and then what does she do? Pay an attorney to intrude upon your marriage but the police power of the state using your money. This is where we have to start. Very, very basic things, okay? And I think we have to just have to just finally realize I mean, you guys already have to know this, okay? When you're dealing with the banks, you're interacting with them, you're setting up corporate accounts, right? And some of the corporations we're using have PMAs and all that stuff. And the banking system is rife with PMAs. Wells Fargo is a PMA. Bank of America is a PMA. Chase Bank is a PMA, guys. These are all private membership associations, and they have the nerve to tell you that you cannot open a bank account if a PMA owns your LLC, So you got to think this through. This is your life and your money and your property. So when I tell you something, it's not some crazy guy just being a jerk. <laughs> I'm actually hoping to solve your problem. So <laughs> yeah, all right. So there's, you know, we have all these conclusions here, but um, yeah. So um, I'm sorry to, I hope, I hope I'm making the point here. You're adults and you have all kinds of legal rights and obligations, okay? And for someone to come in and intrude upon a matter that is unique to yourself, think about this. Here's another aspect of it. Where in a relationship, whether it's business, investing, uh, you're, you're, you're investing, let's say, with Coinbase or you're in a marriage or whatever, where do you have obligations and rights? Like, for example, if I open a Coinbase account, I have certain rights on that account, don't I? It's under the contract. I have certain expectations and things like that. Likewise, Coinbase has certain obligations to me. Well, the same thing in a marriage, right? So there's rights and obligations. That's how it works. So how is it that a court can tell you what to do in your marriage when it has no liability to you taking care of your family? It can't. So where does an attorney get off telling you that you can't talk to your children unless you get approval from the attorney? <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's just i have to use those as examples i know that i'm glad most of you are not in those situations but i'm just saying this is an example where you're adults and you have these rights and obligations and then you have these pukes that are pushing you around and you don't know what to do about it okay but then if I tell you what to do about it and I go to the work of putting something together and I teach you about it and then you still don't do it, I get a problem with that. <laughs> yeah, so did I say enough, Ray? I mean, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but I mean. Yeah, no, I think you, you, you know what I'm on. talking about, right? <laughs> oh, totally. I mean, I'm in so many of the categories you even described because I mean, so what I found is I started all this people distance themselves from me just like you're saying i started going yeah that path, right yeah they, they don't want yeah. to talk to me or if i do talk i'm talking about people i went to high school with, got drunk with did all that stuff we, we did everything but yet oh he's dangerous yeah and you know what it is just like i had a call today and i was talking to nancy and people not reacting fear I, they don't fear even react so they're even yeah they're afraid yeah they won't comment they won't comment they won't comment. go along to get along and so and then cases I've read, because I've started reading a lot more cases since I met you two and what you were indicating to with the courts or what's just like the stuff with the IRS. You're operating totally on prima facie presumption. And then you'll read so many cases where they'll say, well, he didn't object. Yeah. It's just like they, they rely on a mystery procedure to defeat you when the merits of it are completely ignored. Right. The fact is, you wouldn't even be taxed for something that was taxable. I mean, if you want to get to the merits of something, that's an example. But yeah, that's the whole system. The whole thing is is a man a way to prevent you from ac accumulating wealth. 
that's really what it's about. That's why we have IRAs, 401ks. That's why we have, that's why we have the promise of a pension fund to keep you from investing your money yourself. Because who knows, you might get lucky and figure out how to make $2 million by the time you retire on your own. No, we can't have that. <laughs> you know, we can't have that. That's what, you know, I have a video on, it's called bashing the IRAs, bashing the IRAs. Because that's what it's for. It's a system of taxation. So is the, every regulation, right? That that makes it difficult for a small business to get into something. It's a tax. The the SEC is a way to regulate so that uh, it's deliberately intended to prevent the formation and accumulation of capital that would threaten the existing system. Even come close to it. Family court is a great way to even prevent that from happening. 50% divorce rate, that's a, that's a gold mine. That's a gold mine. That's a gold mine. If you're a banker and you have a, the higher the divorce rate you have, where judges are telling families you have to sell your house and, and, and split the equity, what does that do to your 6% mortgage or your 4% mortgage? What does, that, what does that look like in terms of internal rate of return for the bank? It's not a 4% mortgage anymore, is it? It's a 48% mortgage. You're paying 48%. Are you starting to see how this works now? By scaring you and not giving you the education, right? You're shopping for things like liabilities all the time, okay? You're shopping for a house, you're shopping for a car. And what are you doing? You're shopping on interest rate. Screw that. I'm looking at return on capital. I know my car is a liability, okay? I get it. I, I can't avoid it. I still need a car. So I will first go buy something that makes me money. Now I can manage that. It makes sense. But no, one is, no one's taught that way. But anyways, I mean, I like to start from your particular situation and try to uh, work through the problem in the simplest way, the quickest way, in the cheapest way. And uh, I'll give you so my last example. And then... Um, I mean, I, I can do Q&A. I, I you know, know, you know one thing on. I think about, too, I go to the, all these meetings that I started doing this heavy. I fly all across the country and get in groups and all and even starting, you know, back more. But talking about divorce court and the men are getting uh, ringed out. Well, you know what? They may not be men. I mean, here's the thing. I, <laughs> I go to these meetings and this is about, you know, I'm going to, it's about what's going on. You know, we got right. corruption. We're at war and all. And how can I go to these meetings and go talk to these courthouse and do all this stuff? And 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 I'm telling you, this is a this is commends women. Most of the people that I'm running into that are taking action are women. I'm I've like, noticed that men? as well. I, I've noticed where's that. The, where's the men? Where where are the men? Right. Yeah, yeah. they should be in the forefront. And I, I'm, you know, that's commending yeah. women, and I commend I, I have, them. I'm, I I yeah. I think I could get more done running with women than the men. It seems like they're more prevalent. They were during the phony pandemic too. Uh, more women were Which wanting to fight over it. I mean, whatever. I'll take I'll take anybody that wants to fight. I'll I'll help you. But it's mm -hmm. interesting that that men are not. What's wrong with them? Yeah. So I don't know. But uh, I, maybe I'm complaining too much. But I I really want you guys to succeed. You know, and and sometimes I could tell you guys want to be nice to me on the phone, and I don't care if you're nice to me. I want to solve your problem. I don't care if you like me. You pay me, I'll solve your problem. Hopefully, usually I do. Okay. Usually I do it the way I said. So I'm not trying to be your friend. You don't even want to know me. You don't want to know me. <laughs> You're just calling me because you have to, right? So uh, I'm going to do my best, but that requires you to do things that you should be expected. So, but I'm your, I, I want to be your advocate. I am your advocate. Just like Danny DeVito says in other people's money, he says, I'm not your friend. I'm your only friend. And he's liquidating their company. <laughs> you know, but he's right. He's totally right. I think he convinced him, you know, in the end. But I'm just saying, um, yeah. Put your fears on the shelf. I, I tell people all the time when I, you know, when it's, it keeps coming up, it keeps coming up, it keeps, and I, and I recognize when it, when it's the fear that's coming up. And I tell the person, I think you're afraid of such and such and such. And they're like, okay, yeah, whatever, maybe. I say, I need you to describe your fear in words on your own time and see if you can do that, first of all. And a lot of times when I talk to them again, 
it, they couldn't do it because there was nothing to be afraid of. They actually couldn't describe it in words. There was no words. And, and then sometimes if they can describe it in words, they realize it wasn't even something to be afraid of. Almost always. There's not. Because you're afraid of the future because you don't know. Just like, I don't know what's going to happen. I can, I can write the most brilliant motion to dismiss ever. And the judge can just ignore it. <laughs> he could just ignore it and force me to appeal him. I don't know. So anyways, um, I hope really that what I'm saying to you is going to help maybe steer you a little bit. Realize there's financial interests that are adverse to your entire life. Everything that's important to you, someone is attacking. You don't even know who it is. A lot of times I can tell you who it is. If we have a conversation, I can say, okay, well, I, I may not know names of people, but I can tell you there's a particular financial interest that's doing this thing, right? Uh, somebody's using our government to act as if you're a, a terrorist. Guys, we already know that. Well, then y'all actually, as a solution, you actually have to do things that a terrorist would do, even though you're not, such, such as, for example, do your banking on the dark web or do your banking through a precious metals vault. I remember when uh, the banks were uh, screwing with me on the merchant account way, way back, 20, 25 years ago. On the merchant account, they they were trying to screw with my uh, my sales, okay? I actually had to get merchant accounts in foreign countries for gambling. I had to pay a high, high premium for that. I got the same merchant account as a gambling house would, like a blackjack dealer online or a casino. I would have to go get merchant accounts with those merchant processors just because I was then able to process my client's uh, sale, just because the banks were screwing with me. But, but I have to identify the problem. I have to see what the thing is. I talked to someone today, and I'm not faulting her, but I talked to someone today who said she went to the bank and the bank said, the employee said he didn't understand what a PMA was and they went to their attorneys and all this nonsense and said, we don't want to open an account for you. And then she called me on it. She called me. Okay, now what? I said, well, you know, we had this conversation. I said, well, go go to another bank. But I also gave her some language to use. I gave her some examples. I said, so what's happening is, in that case, this may help you all. In that case, the bank is saying that your name is not on the PMA, right? And the PMA is the owner of the limited liability company. But then she has the bank resolution. She has a written document saying that she is the authorized signer. I mean, you have to accept it at face value. It's in writing, so the bank has to accept it. And she's expressed to them in writing, the bank, that she's the 100% beneficial owner, right? So what's the bank's problem? Why is she being treated differently? Why is her company being treated differently than the accountant for IBM that's instructed by his boss to go open a bank account? He doesn't own IBM stock. Why is he required to own IBM stock? He's not. So let me, let me use one second here. Can you guys hear that? Can you guys hear that noise? No, no, no I don't hear anything. I hear anything. No. No, no, no. I don't hear anything. Deep state. Can y'all hear that noise? No. 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 Can't hear anything. Coming through Zoom? No. Yeah, I don't hear anything. I just hear a bunch of static. You guys hear that? No. Loud and clear? No. Not at all. Loud and clear. Yeah. Super clear here. It's clear here. Man, that's really weird. 
You guys can hear me okay? Yeah, uh, I, you're coming through good. I can yeah. hear you. Okay, thank you for that. Yeah, there's right. no static on the side at all. No, I got some feedback on mine. <laughs> Let's see. Can you all hear me okay? Ray? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, I can hear you. My headset. I know. Sorry about that. <clears throat> oh, lots of static. Headset blew up, maybe. <laughs> anyway, so I'm sorry, guys, but I just want to express that. Just work with me, okay? I've been doing this work for like 30 years or so. And uh, the problem I run into is like in these divorce cases, there's like five things that has to be done, for example, okay? You come to me with a problem. I say, I can do this one, two, three. I explain one, and then you won't do it because you're afraid. You know, and you don't get you don't get results overnight, okay? So in divorce cases, what's happening is the marital estate is being pillaged through involuntary receivership. Do you think the court is going to play fair? These lawyers, it's their bread and butter. They want to pillage your estate. They're going to trick you. They're going to coerce you. They're going to threaten you. But you gotta, you gotta not give in. You've gotta, you know, act like someone's invading your home. <laughs> Caleb, what? Hey, John. Um, you know what I've been noticing is, um, with this KYC stuff, I've got, um, I've got some of these exchanges like Kraken, for example where they're coming back and they're like, okay, we need new documents now. And I'm like, wait a minute, sucker. I just went through like all this time talking to you, sending, you know, sending you the documents, trying to explain what these documents mean. And so I'm just finding it interesting that they're, they're like wanting you to re up it. The same thing with my bank account, my bank account, I just ignore, but Kraken I can't ignore because um, they've disabled my ability to use wow. it as an exchange. Really? Yeah. yeah and so, those, but I mean, you shouldn't have to deal with that at all. But then, you know, what about just telling them nothing's changed? They don't care, but they want more. Well, I'm in the I'm in the process right now. I'll let you know how it goes, and I can post it on the group. Okay. Um, but um, but I got around. It was really cool the first time. They were asking me for the beneficial owners, and I said, "Well, you know, it's it's uh, it's owned by the PMA," and they're like, "Yeah, well, okay, who's in the PMA?" And I'm like, "Well, that's that's a not it's not a public entity; it's private." Yeah. So what I can so what I can do is I can send you um, I can send you the document with all the information redacted of the members, and they're like, "Yeah, <laughs> that's good." I shit you not. They said, well, yeah, sure. You can use my letter example. I did, I did a video on this recently about showing us proprietary. It's under the attorney-client privilege, yeah. all these things. And that yeah. there's a liquidated damages clause. So if you want to join the contract and pay the damages, okay, fine. Well, that's cool. I didn't even have to go that far. Literally, yeah. I think for their compliance, they just need a piece of paper, no matter what's on it, in the file. So if the big bad wolf comes and says, hey, do you have you know, a document be. A, B and C, they pull it out. It's everything's redacted and they accepted it. And they're like, whatever. So I'm just going to send to that. I'm going to send that to them again. Um, and uh, well, I'm glad to hear that you're handling it like that. And that's the right attitude. You just got to work through it. I mean, I can come up with my ideas too. And that's the nice thing about being able to collaborate, but just have the attitude, right? Instead of being faced with something that's blocking you and then quitting, and then coming back to me, I don't mind helping. It's just that, but you got to have the attitude to say, wait a minute, <laughs> this doesn't make yeah. any sense. Who, yeah. What are you doing? Are you conducting an investigation? You know, like push back a little bit. Don't, don't always try to comply, you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, I, I just flew into the country like two weeks ago and, um, Man, looking at the public, I they it just always terrifies me because all these people are like they're like standing in front of the camera and everyone's smiling and I'm like, what is your problem? Man? What are you doing? And so it comes, it's my turn. I come up, and they're like, please stand in front of the camera, and I'm like, no, here's my identification. You yeah. don't need a, you don't need a, you don't need a camera. You don't need to scan my face. Read my passport. It's right here. Exactly. And they didn't, they didn't say anything, and they couldn't say anything. They didn't like it. But yeah, exactly. I'm glad you did that. 
I've, I've done that. But fucking years. everybody else is like smiling you know, and I, fixing their I, I was, and I was I'm... waiting in line to go on something. I was, it was a boat ride or something. And there was a lot of people. We all had like these paper tickets or whatever. And yeah. uh, they wanted to take everybody's photo. And they make it look yeah. like it's this thing. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and when they got to me, I said, no, I don't want my photo taken. And they all yeah. looked at me like I was talking yeah. And I just yeah. did it just to do it. Because I could. Because I have the right to say no. I don't right. think you guys think it's entertaining. I don't. It's not funny. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, that's good. We should be like that. That should be our attitude. Like, who do you think you are? I know I don't need to do what you idiots are doing. But that's the problem. You, somebody made the point here earlier. There's so many idiots out there that it, we're, like, sucked into it, right? The whole, like, okay, so where I am now at my office, if yeah. I want to receive mail, so I get mail from FedEx and post office and all this, there's a contract for that. But in order to get my mail, it goes into these Luxor One lockboxes. Well, uh -huh. that requires a different contract. And if you read the contract, man, you got to give up the rights to your likeness. You got to give up your royalties. That's the thing. I want to make a, a call on this because I want to show you how they see it's so important. But anyways, I told the management company, I said, I don't have to agree to this to get my mail. I already have a contract and you're interfering with my mail. That's a crime. Give me my damn mail. I don't care how you figure it out, but... I don't have to sign a contract with you idiots. You just give me access to the facility or whatever you need to do. So they don't know. So what to why, do. why is like why is like a our personal, like obviously a personal property like our estate? Yes, that's valuable land, proper like that. But but why do they want so badly? Why do they want the the you know like the face of giving up their biometric data so that it can be used against them later as an identifier? That way you cannot escape a system they're trying to create, which is a technocracy. So that way software yeah. runs your life. I see. I see. Kind of like when I like when I call, like I okay, I try to get some customer help on my uh, merchant account and their AI bots, it's like impossible to talk to someone. I'm like, right. oh, this is this is how they're doing it. Yeah, you can't it's actually the, it's the get technocracy. A hold of somebody. You're seeing it come into formation right now. Right. Well, I'm not down. I'm not down, well, man. It's, yeah, it's going to get worse. I mean, right now they want you to do everything over your phone. I always tell people I don't use my phone that way. They look at me crazy, like I'm crazy. But uh, anyways, yeah. we got to push back a little bit. But thanks for your comments. Uh, Alex, what did you want to add? Yeah, no, that's it. Okay, thanks. Alex? Hi. So I have a quick question, which I was kind of just answering it as we're speaking here. Um, a lot of crypto exchanges offer debit cards. Now, I was just thinking, as long as we spend from that credit card, even though it's through um, an LLC account, because it's becoming cash when we spend, that's that becomes taxed directly to us, right? Like a- If it's an LLC account, it's cash to the LLC. The LLC should get the 1099, and there will be a 1099. If it's a so personal then, account, it's individual 1099. Yeah, and it is an LLC. So what what I mean by that is, you know how we if we pay ourselves through the LLC, then that becomes our tax, right? So would spending from that debit card be like well, it depends on what you're spending the money on. But as far oh, okay. as the bookkeeping between the exchange and that account holder, that's going to be the way you want it. Your 1099 is going to be money because mm -hmm. what's happening is the use of that card is actually resulting in the sale of cryptos. Right. Money is well, the coins are being sold by that account holder. So that's fine. It's just that then you have to deal with anything, right? So if you're using it yeah. to pay your credit card bill or your light bill, then yeah, technically it's uh, reportable. Okay. Yeah. And what you guys were talking about, about uh, the PMAs, Binance just declined my application because I was using a PMA. Yeah. You know, what we found is we just do LLCs with individual names, open all the accounts, and then amend the articles if you really want a PMA. So yeah. I was, able, I was able to do it through Coinbase, but not Binance. Surprisingly. Yeah, you know, again, I think it's I think it's a bit arbitrary. I think I think some of the employees know how to do it and some don't, and they don't want to lose their jobs or something. Yes. That could be what's going on too. Yeah. I see that with the banks. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was pretty much my question. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Alex. Annie, how are you doing? I'm here. Sorry, I was muted. Um Hey, good. Just really quick, I want to understand. So, you know, I've got the California uh, Franchise State Board <laughs> that I pay have to pay tax to. 
on my um, rental business, my short-term rental oh, business, yeah, right? Right. Um, right? So whatever, I always have to pay that. It's fine. And then now they just sent out a thing that says, oh, well, you actually have to pay for the furnishings <laughs> um, right. of and that. They don't know what the you furnishings know, like, are, so they want you to disclose them. Yeah. So they so, sent out a form. I know. I don't think it. And so, you know, the, I'm the owner of the business. This is, even though I have the easement, this doesn't have to do with the property tax. This is my business. I know what they're doing. So, it's personal property so, when it's tax, but it's actually private yes. property that you have. Right. So, right, so here's, the why, here's like, the distinction oh. the fact that, that they don't know what property you have is the definition of private property, which is not subject to taxation. So mm -hmm. you would write a letter back and say, do you have a list of the personal property at this residence that you would like to tax? Please provide me with that list as soon as you can. Back to the assessor? Yep. And okay, tell them, my... I, understand, I understand it's your job to assess a tax on the personal property. So if you could please provide me with a list of the personal property, then I'd be much obliged. Okay, got that. Here's the other thing. So now... Years ago, I used to not have to have a vacation rental permit. They saw it as a way to make money, right? So they have this permit in order to run your vacation rental. It used to not be that way. And then they arbitrarily increase what you have to pay. Literally, it went from 300 to last time it was 2,900 I had to pay within over 10 years or whatever. And you so- You have a bit of an I'm, advantage there, though, in your situation. Because yeah, of my current it. situation? Yeah, well, so I'm kind of like- man, what do I do? Because this permit, I keep I keep up with it, you know, to be able to run my business. Why don't you send them a letter but and say, I'm you thinking... know what? you're charging me too much money. What value am I getting? <laughs> Why is it going from 300 to 2,900? But what if they revoke it? These are just, right, devil that. Then revoke it. So what? Whatever. And then they go, no, you can't, you can no longer run that vacation rental. And they send, I don't know, send the cut. What are they going to do? I don't know, send their freaking little cops out to come and get, stop They'll you. I have no idea. Send you to court. Permitting violation. Yeah. There's no crime there. It's just not paying right. tax. And just tell them they're not going to pay. Remember that tax has to do with the title, right? It's their claim on the title. In your situation, do you care? So the tax, which the property tax is on the title, but then the the, the tax on my business. Like if I just ran a pizza parlor, right? You'd have to pay tax on, even if you There's lease a, the property, right? You'd right. have to pay well, tax if, even if you... Well, how are they going to secure even, the, the lien, the payment of the lien? Lock your doors? Come there with the police and lock your doors? I, I really don't know. I, I'd have to look more yeah. at it, but uh, my first response would be to tell them that they, they want too much money and you don't believe you're getting the benefits from it. Okay. And then in regards to this thing where they want to tax what's inside my place, be like, I just play zero. I got it for free. I could also say I just got it for free. And so it's zero, you know, because they want you to. Yeah. Well, they, they, they want a list of stuff that they but don't have. What you paid. They want you to pay. Yeah. But they, they can also look on the Airbnb and kind of see the inside, you know, well, they, they can, can just kind of see it. They can look at some Airbnb with the same square footage and say, well, you must pay the same. They can do that too. Right. And right now they're saying if you don't, like I'm supposed to have it in by April 1st and I haven't yet. And they're saying if you don't get it by May 7th, there's a 10% uh, penalty plus we will assess it for you. I would like and to so know I'm what, like, are, what are they going to do if you don't pay? Then I could really I know. gauge some sort this of This is brand new. They just sent it out this year. They didn't do it before. I and so. I mean, if I see the notices, I could probably give you a better idea. Yeah, I'll, 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 like I'll email. Because the it's basically what they do to hotels, but now that people are making so much money off Airbnb, they're like, wait a minute. We can That's make money you. off of you it's guys. Business. Their, your, their business is yes. taking part of yours. Yeah, and my uh, my friend who, she whatever, she runs them for other people. She's like, I think it's if you make over like 100 grand and then they're like, wait a minute. Then they care. They start caring. Well, the thing from your comment here is I just oh. want to make the point that there's a distinction between personal property and private, and personal property is taxable in that situation because it's for a business. 
But the fact that they don't have an itemization yes. of the personal property is the definition of it being private and not taxable. That's why they want you to tell you tell them what it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I don't want to take this everybody's is, time up because I know I that it's, it's valuable. Just, it's so obvious, right? Yeah. But I don't know what they're going to do, right? They can make up all kinds of stuff. So. It's gonna all right. Well, thank it. you, John. Okay. I'll let I him... hope that helps, but I'd like to see more of what, I'll they, send it what to they're you. sending you. So. I've got lots of hands up here. Let me go to it. I'll send it to you. Thanks. Hey, Nancy. Hey, I just wanted to say thank you. I don't have a question. But um, I just think that the topic tonight and how you opened up the meeting um, was really validating because a lot of us are swimming in that pool of people that won't act because they're too mm -hmm. afraid. And um, you guys have, I told Ray this morning, because of you guys, I don't feel crazy. And so I just wanted to thank you. And I, and I don't, you certainly did not need to apologize because you went on a rant because that <laughs> rant was so validating to me. And I have to say it was really valuable. So thank you. I appreciate you. that, Nancy. Yep. I appreciate that. Yeah. The, uh, the, the thing I did on the FinCEN issue from last year, uh, you know, people thought I was crazy. Even my own wife, my wife was scared. I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, and she had every right to be, I mean, it was kind of foolish, but I really was betting on my understanding of the regulation and then some attorney mm -hmm. wanted to attack him on the constitutionality of it. So, okay, fine. I'll hit him on yeah. that one too, but yeah. Yeah. So. Well, if we don't push back, we comply, and I can't comply. Yeah. So, what are you going to do? It was the first time I ever said, "Tell them to shove it." Yeah. <laughs> you know, normally I come up with a solution, but I'm like, "No, we're not going to do it." I'm not so going to do it. Do that. I'm not going to do it. I know. <laughs> so, I just, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Nate. Right. And, uh, yeah. I'll go to no comply next. No comply. Maybe he fell asleep. Maybe he fell hey, asleep. no, no, I did not fall asleep. Go ahead. Huh. Oh, I just wanted to wonder, and since we're on this topic, if I could get your little short three or four sentence answer. I uh, Another LLC I have with a partner, we applied to Kraken. And, uh, you know, for a, a account with a, you know, a JJ Singleton uh, LLC. And uh, they want to know further insight into the nature of my business. What's my target market? What does my customer base look like? Do I have any marketing materials? Does your business have an operational online presence, social media, video channels, et cetera? Please provide all relevant hyperlinks and please clarify in detail how the source of funds were acquired and generated. And they want my EIN letter. But uh, it's fine just, to give just... an EIN letter to W9, but I would write a letter back, uh, a letter, I would write a business letter from the CEO of the LLC. It could be you. And I would explain that none of these apply to your company and that you've been you've been sent a generic uh, intake form requesting information that does not pertain to your company that's being used solely for the purposes for which Kraken is arranged, right? Kraken, is it Kraken? Yes. yes. Yeah, so you open an account at Kraken. That's what I'm doing with the LLC. I'm opening an account at Kraken. What makes you think I'm involved in all these other things? I'm not. Yeah. And do it as, okay. you know, using your title, make up the title you want, you know, CEO, vice mm -hmm. president, whatever. You can even say corporate counsel if you want. And write it back on company letterhead and say the sole purpose of this business is to do exactly what I've done so far. Open an account with you guys. Why are you sending me this? I think you've mistaken me for someone else. Okay. That gives me, gives me the outline. See, instead of trying to participate with their insanity, you say, wait a minute, you're insane. <laughs> Politely, yeah, right. you know. But uh, I think you've mistaken me for someone else. This is a holding company as per the documents I've already provided you. Here's my EIN approval letter. Here's my W-9. The purpose that you have for all your customers, that's my purpose. So if you don't know your purpose, then I can't help you. Okay. I don't try that. Yes. That you should that, by the way. Um, I've had that same response. Yeah, just give me get give me a little quick and then formulating, you know, to hear your thoughts real quick. I don't know how okay. to formulate the letter. Thanks for that. Okay, Alex, would you would you come up with? So I of course submitted my taxes and then weeks later I get a 1099 B from a crypto exchange, which now I realize these aren't sent out till later 
Um, so do I have to amend my taxes if it's a loss? Ooh, I, I don't know what you're, so what's the 1099D for? Um, it is for uphold. And okay, but what did you do to cause that? Did you sell cryptos for dollars? I did, but it was all at a loss. Okay, well then it's taxable, so report it and okay. get your deduction. Okay. You're, you're gonna have to report it anyways. If you sold cryptos for dollars in your name, then it has to show up in your 1040. Yes. If you didn't sell and you got a 1099, well then it's erroneous. Yes. But yeah, you're- and and I'm the one that's going back and forth with you on emails about the uphold account where um, it's all erroneous, but they want me to send them proof that I <laughs> send it to my wallet. Who uh, uphold does? Yes. So I had a tax examiner call me saying, hey, we believe you, but um, we don't have a revenue code to put into our system because crypto is new. We only have it for stocks but not crypto. So because that's a new system we have going on, you have to send me uh, evidence that you are trans your transaction went to a hardware wallet. No, you don't. And that you didn't sell it. That's no, you don't. He's demonstrating and admitting his incompetence. You're not required to do his job. If he doesn't have that information, that's his problem. Yeah. And he doesn't know what he's doing. So yeah, it's the, not your role to remediate him, is what I would tell him. It's not my role to remediate you. Okay. And it appears that you don't know what you're doing because there's no new law that taxes cryptos. It taxes the sale of cryptos for dollars, not cryptos. Yeah, and he, so, and yeah. he said, he's like, if you, ex if you transferred from one coin to another, then that is taxable and... I, I know it's not. Only you decide that. No. He can't decide that. You can decide if it's going to be taxed or not by filing a return. It's not yes. for him to decide what your tax liabilities because you're the one signing on a penalty of perjury. You see, guys? You see how you got to think about this stuff? It's not my job to remediate you, and it's not for you to determine my tax liability because I'm the only one on the entire planet that's signing on a penalty of perjury. So shut up. Yeah, and he mentioned he mentioned he's changing my form to statutory. I don't even know what that means. But did you send me these things to look at? Yeah, yeah, and I, I have an appointment. With you? <laughs> yeah, I have oh, an appointment with you on the fourteenth as well. All right, all right. Into it. <laughs> oh, thanks for that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Elaine, thanks for your patience. Oh, that's all right. all right. Um, I have a question that may be just linguistics and also uh, exposing my total ignorance. Okay, so how can the LLC be owned by a PMA, but I am the sole beneficial owner and the authorized signatory? Am I screwing okay, it's, it's language? A titling. It's a titling name. It's just a right titling. It's just titling. It's a name. It's it's like an alter ego. Okay. At okay. this point, it doesn't have to be. But when you're interacting with these morons. That's how you're going to do it. You're going to say, well, you know, it's just basically an alter ego. I have the 100% beneficial owner in, in all of it. It's just how I like to express my interest in this the name of this PMA. That's how I like to call myself. It's like okay. a fictitious name. Okay. And, and you're going to, this video will be available, yes? Yeah. And the, the one from last week I haven't pu uh, published yet, but I'll give it like, it'll be private too, I think. Okay. Yeah. And on privacy so, fight? It'll be on privacy fight? No. Privacy fight we're moved over to aceofcoins.club. Privacy fight may oh. still be there, but aceofcoins.club is gonna be the new platform. So this will be this will be on Telegram. I'm gonna well I'm gonna put it there too. Yeah, but I'm gonna make it private or unlisted on YouTube and I'm gonna list it on the telegram so you guys can see it. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. It, it helps me to hear it all three times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No all right, Donkey, what do you what do you have there? <clears throat> Donkey. Uh, hello, John. Hey. Uh, yeah, I was going through uh, your documents that you send when you created uh, PMA and NLC. And so so, so, so the, the structure resembles uh, actually trust, right? So the P PMA is incorporated entity. 
that does not have any 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 any, any bank account, any any tax number. And, it doesn't and... need to. No, it doesn't. It's not an entity. It's it's literally an association. So, like for example, uh, your marital estate or your family. That's not a, a corporation. It's not an entity. Like it's like church, right? Basically. It's a what? Like like church. Exactly. It, it's a church. It, yeah. Not not so much in a, the five hundred c three deal. That's not a church. That's a tax classification. But a church is literally an association of people. Yeah, like small church that just like somewhere well, like in the rural area. Mom, dad, baby. Right. Yeah, and so that entity entity owns uh, and owns LLC basically, right? And yeah. so I can create I can create many many LLC and connect to the same basically uh, and write that the same Yep. BMX XYZ owns uh, this LLC, that LLC basically it's like a uh, okay. like a it's like at the top and then LLC like at the bottom, right? Like yeah. could be like 20, yeah. 20, 30 LLC, right? Yeah. But it the is. same, same, the same yeah. PMA. Yeah, PMA is a group of people, even though it's one, but let's just say it's a group of people that each of which has a right to own something, okay? And then we just give that whole group a name for convenience. That's what your PMA is doing. It's a group. And yeah, basically, it's it's, a, it's 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 it, it resembles trust, right? Trust. It can be operated that way, yes. If it's for the if it's the property ownership is separate from the each individual member, which it can be, uh, and it is owned in a, a way that benefits a beneficiary, then yeah, it operates as a trust, yes. Yeah, but the, to, re to register trust, it's it's more complicated to to do to to register trust versus yeah. registering listed in the public. A trust is a trust. You can tell everybody about it or not. It's still a trust. Register no, if someone like it. want to go to, if you want to register trust someone, he goes to a lawyer and lawyer charges like 100000 for that. I understand. You can register. No, I mean, like the lawyers, they're going to charge for if he wants to create trust or like entity, yes. something mm -hmm. similar entity. But it it, it would, would be called something like different. It could be a different name for that. And he will just uh, will charge it for for that like a lot. Hello. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. yeah. Anyway, so it's just uh, basically PMA resembles trust, but it's not trust. It can. It doesn't have to be. It could operate as a trust. Uh, okay, thanks for that. And uh, Wayne, what did you want to ask? Give me a second. I'm there. Uh, can you hear me, John? Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, um, you told me before with uh, LLC creation and um, some other stuff. One of the things I did want to ask you about, what do you suggest for um, estate planning? Like, you know, traditional <laughs> okay, will perfect. and trust and all that. Like, I'm sure you call. Uh, yeah. You've probably heard me say this before. The best estate plan is to have, first of all, no estate, no. have a will, and then have a plan to handle your assets through management of its the credentials and have your family understand what all that is and also have confidence, financial confidence. That would be a good, a good beginning for a estate plan. Okay, what was the first thing you said? I'm sorry. Don't have an estate. Your estate, you have to understand, is the collection of rights and obligations you have while you're alive that survive your death so that those relationships can be uh, dissolved in a way that doesn't disrupt other people. That's really what your estate is, okay? So to avoid probate is what I'm talking about. So you avoid probate by not having an estate, not giving someone a reason to file a probate proceeding and have a will but don't have property in your will that's of value and manage the property out of your estate in a way that benefits the people that you want to benefit when you're not here. That's what I recommend. Okay. That makes sense. It kind of, I figured it goes along the same lines of the other the things you talk about. Um, is that something that would be good to maybe set up a time with you to discuss or. Yeah, I do. Plan? I do calls on this and consulting on this and I, okay. yes, I do go into the details with you. Yes. I, I haven't tried to reach out to you in a while. Are you even still like able to get a meeting? This with year, you I'm still days? available. So if you go to aceofcoins.com, <laughs> you can still book with me. Yeah, I think I'm a month out though. Okay, that's yeah. fine. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, John. All right.
the courts are one. All right, guys, thanks so much. I'm a bit tired. I'm going to call it quits. Enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much for tolerating my ranting. I hope it That's helps. Awesome. All right. Great call. Thank you. Thank thanks you. So much. Good night. Thank y you.